still to come on 21 Action News at 6. Sharon Steele battles back from bankruptcy only to face another recession. Meantime, the Steele Company's legacy is relived in a Rockwell collection on loan to the butler. Details coming up. For Sharon Steele, life after Victor Posner is being complicated by the economy. Sharon Steele has been out of bankruptcy and under new ownership since the first of the year. The only complaint Sharon Steele's new chief executive officer has right now is the uncertainty over when the recession will end. I'm optimistic with some good news, hopefully shortly, that we will get back to a normal consumer spending program, which will reflect itself uh, in increased uh, uh, shipments uh, of our steel company. But basically, I'm godly optimistic. We have a long ways to go, but we have a good start. Right now, Siegman says Sharon Steele is working at capacity, and he hopes it continues that way. Meantime, Sharon Steele is also showing its commitment to the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys with a contribution to the arts. 21's Dick Skelton explains. A dozen Norman Rockwell illustrations were commissioned by Sharon Steele in 1966. They disappeared for a while, taken to the Florida home of former Chief Executive Officer Victor Posner. Recovered through court action, the originals are now on permanent loan to Youngstown's Butler Institute of American Art. We are proud to have these uh, paintings here to show the resurrection and the rebirth, if you wish, of Sharon Steele. Rockwell's illustrations are of real people doing real jobs at Sharon Steele. Bob Atticott, now retired, posed for this one at his vacuum degassing machine. There was nothing I could see about him that you wouldn't like. And when you're posing for him, it's real quiet, never raise his voice, just slow, steady, easy. This is retired metallurgist George Petropoulos, who says there was only one drawback to posing for Rockwell. A lot of times my boss would introduce me to some of our customers that came in to talk to us, you know, I was one of their celebrities because I was painting my rock and I always felt a little uncomfortable. The butler is preparing a special gallery for the Sharon Steele Rockwell Originals. It'll open to the public March 10th. Dick Skelton, 21 Action News. The chief officer of Sharon Steele says he is guardedly optimistic about the future of his company. Walter Sickman says the economy will have a lot to do with the future performance of the recently reorganized steelmaker. He wouldn't discuss possible furloughs but says he expects a turnaround for Sharon Steele in the near future. Labor and management relationships. Uh, we have a good start. We, have, we are on a level playing field with uh, the other steel companies that we are competing against. And I think we have a good future. Sickman's remarks were made this morning at the Butler Institute of Art, where Norman Rockwell's collection of paintings on Sharon Steele will be on display beginning March 10th. Uh, was like, we, I think we've all seen pictures of him and uh, there's a documentary which I'm going to bore my class with uh, next week, uh, Norman Rockwell. Um, and, and he just seems like the all-American boy. W were, you, were you able to get close enough to him to, to have a, you know, a feeling about what he was like as a person? Well, he was, uh, he and his wife both were small statured, uh, slight built individuals and they were already retired I believe uh, back in 1966 when these paintings were made and they were very professional and uh, Norman had his uh, pipe in his mouth and his wife had her camera because she was the photographer she took all the pictures of all the fellas and uh, and uh, all the different scenery throughout the mill and they they were there for several weeks taking photographs all over the place and they selected like Bob said uh, for certain jobs like he had and others had, but uh, my work was primarily in the laboratory and I sometimes went out to uh, uh, various places in the mill to quality control type work and uh, also in the laboratory check uh, steel through microscopes and so forth and that's when my picture depicts and uh, where now did did you um, did you have to go to his home uh, or did he do all the work here in Sharon or no, he came. To, he and his wife both came to Sharon, and uh, they toured the mill for I think several weeks, taking pictures and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now I met him in an office. Uh, he and his wife and my boss uh, brought them in and introduced me to them, and uh, that's when Mrs. Rockwell thought I'd be a good subject, and she picked me. <laughs> <So> <laughs>
<laughs> what are your re what are re your recollections of him? Well, first time I saw him was when he came into the electric furnace building. He come through a large door where the trucks come in. I knew him right away. I didn't know he was coming, but I knew him right away. And he pointed at me and he wanted to take my picture. You know, and he asked the superintendent about it. And he talked to me then. And the next day he came in, and they spent maybe. 20 minutes up on my unit where I work at the vacuum degasser. Uh, yeah, we'll talk right along, just like old, just like family. Yeah. They're real easy spoken, quiet, uh, both of them were. You very seldom heard anything out of her. And she jumped every time he said anything, she, she was right at it. <laughs> Take, she took all, like George says, she took all the pictures, all the photographs. And, he told you how to pose. Oh, okay. <laughs> did did he do? Um, now here's an artist asking questions. Did he do drawings before he painted you, or uh, just the photographs? Well, what he did uh, back home, uh, we don't know. I mean, he was. I think these took at least a year to uh, yeah, finish. Maybe even two years. I'm not sure. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, because in 1968 is when we, I I recollect we got them at the uh, plant and mm -hmm. we had a big day there. They, the company had all kind of brochures and, uh, to give to people and uh, they gave them to customers and, uh, and then the paintings hung in our main offices and the corridors and the corporate offices and so forth. I wonder who had this brainstorm. Somebody, somebody was sitting in an office one day and thought, why don't we get Norman Rockwell to come to Sharon to, uh, who was it, the person who had that idea? Uh, I could guess, but uh, maybe I better not mention any names, but I'm sure you can find out. Uh. Okay. Uh, I believe Roman was still in No, no, I think it was, was it President Freeze? And Ed Summers. The, the purpose, <laughs> and the purpose of the, the purpose of the paintings was t um, for brochures? Uh. Yes, uh, a lot of these copies were in uh, trade journals and so forth. Iron Age, uh, Business Week. Uh, every month they'd have w uh, a different picture of uh, these 14 uh, uh, paintings you see. And with a little bit of something, what the company does or what we produce and so forth. Uh, Norman Rockwell had an aura about him. I mean, he was one of the most famous people in the world and certainly the greatest artist that this country produced. Uh, did you sense that or did you? Oh yeah, I think uh, Norman was so well known. I don't, I don't think you could uh, not recognize him if you had seen it, even pictures of him. Uh, I just it, it, there's something about the man that it, his uh, his personality or his uh, uh, looks uh, you'd recognize instantly. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll open it up. Does anybody have any questions of this? Or anybody have a question out there that we could? Yeah. George, the background in your work, can you tell us about the background? Uh, yes, there's a, if you notice there's a ladle and you see somebody, some huge person with these arms outstretched. And uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name, but it's a mythical steel worker that uh, the steel companies uh, uh, got into using and it's uh, Joe Magarak or Joe Mazarak, it's a, it's a name like that. It's a Hungarian name, and he's a mythical iron steel worker uh, that the steel companies uh, use as a mythology of our, our business. Yes? You said after the paintings were done, they hung in the office at the plant mm -hmm. for a while. Did you, either of you get to take the paintings to your home? Oh, no. No. But uh, as I said, we, the company put out brochures, and uh, there were plenty of them there. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, Norman Rockwell gave each of us a, an autographed copy of our, of our picture in that brochure, which we keep. And you could have gotten uh, a lot of these prints, and they were color, too. They were beautiful. And a lot of people made uh, 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 hanging... Uh, uh, fr frames, yes, and uh, there were a lot of them in our other offices in the uh, in the company. But uh, you could also do it at home. I I never did that with mine. Mine's just in a drawer. But 
<laughs> Does anybody else have a question of Bob Adicott or George Petropoulos? Yeah. You know, there was a series of 14 paintings or, uh, total, and um, the mystery painting, I find it curious. Uh, was there an investigation done to find that painting? I think there was, but... Uh, I, did you go to your house or Bob's house? <laughs> no, no, nobody ever came to our house, no. True, one of the paintings disappeared, but nobody really knows. No I don't think it was, well, I shouldn't say anything, I guess. It, it just disappeared. <laughs> there is, of there, course. Excuse me, there, there, there were copies of all of them. So even though the one that's disappeared, uh, you can actually see what it looked like. It's, uh, unfortunately, it, I don't think it's here today, but it, uh, it shows a, a person working in the, in the um, melt shop or the blast furnace, blast. and he's taking a sample of steel in a, a ladle, and he's got a, a heavy, uh, uh, wool, wool fire proof. Yeah, one of those wool fire uh, coat because there's a lot of sparks and a lot of, you know, little hot steel sometimes spatters on you and so forth. But he's got this ladle uh, on a, a spoon. It's actually a long spoon, a long handle. And they check, they take a, a sample, and then they check the uh, chemistry of the, uh, of the, uh, metal coming out of the blast furnace. Unfortunately, the fellow's not here. Huh? We saw him two years ago, and yeah. we're not sure whether he's still living or not, but uh, Who, what is his, his name? name is Reichert. I forget his first name. Reichert? Reichert. 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 Uh -huh. John, was John Reichert? Yeah, I think that's where right. Where is there. he living now? He lived over in the Hermitage Sharon area okay. there. Mm -hmm. Did you know at the time of the paintings that you both would be this popular? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, uh, I personally feel uncomfortable, to tell you the truth. I, uh, I was elated and happy that I was picked. I'm not saying I'm not. But uh, a lot of times uh, customers would come to our chair and steel plant and uh, my boss would introduce me and he always had to say that I was one of their celebrities because I was painted by Rockwell and I always <laughs> I, I always felt uncomfortable to tell you the truth. Follow up on that celebrity status. I just, I'm just curious, how often do you do interviews as far as um, you know, being subjects to This is uh, our second time. Two years ago, when our company brought all these paintings back from Florida, see, they hung in our offices for five years or so at least, maybe a little bit longer. Then uh, Mr. Posner decided he'd take them to uh, Florida. In the meantime, we had had copies made because they were afraid somebody would steal them. But anyway, he took the originals to Florida, and then a couple of years ago, Sharon Steele took some legal action, and they got the paintings back, and they had a, a showing in, uh, in Hermitage, Sharon, uh, two years ago. And uh, a lot of newspaper, TV people were there, and uh, I went through the same thing, <laughs> except I didn't make a documentary. <laughs> Anyone else have a, have a question or want to share a, a thought about it? Yeah. Did you um, know each other before you did the paintings, or did you just, you know, know each other like from the painting? We we knew each other not personally, but we knew each other by name and uh, to speak to because uh, he Actually, was still associated with the metallurgical yeah, the metallurgical was, department as I, I was. I was associated with metallurgical and uh, quality control. They, on our job, they, they combine them. I work for both departments. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was an observer. I went out in the mill. I didn't, wasn't in the lab. I worked in the mill. And we'd go to the pickle shop. After they pickle it, you can see different flaws in the steel. Uh, and cracks, if it cracks, or seams in it, whatever. And that was my job. You didn't have to have an education, you just looked, you know, it's something you could see. Yeah. Um, how, how long did you work for Sharon Steele? Like, how long were you still there? Or uh, I worked there 43, <coughs> a little over 43 years, and I retired in 1987. I worked there 30 years, and I retired in 1982. I, I keep myself rather active, uh, not with not not doing any uh, you know uh, metallurgy or anything, but uh, I, I keep active. 
Have either of you been to the Norman Rockwell Museum up in up in the east? I never have. No, I didn't even I know of one to take. What a great idea, huh? <laughs> Well, we really appreciate you sharing some time with us. It's, uh, this was a special moment in your life, and uh, it means a great deal to us that you shared it with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>